number one. Last winter break, my family and I decided to take a trip to California and then road trip from San Diego to LA and then end up in San Francisco. We stopped at little cities on the way, like Monterey and stuff. Anyways, during one of our times on the road, we ended up driving pretty late at night just because the time had gotten away from us. My dad realizes that we needed gas to make it to the hotel. Granted, it was late at night and with my whole family of seven, my elderly grandma and the car packed to the brim in suitcases, he did not want to stop at an unknown gas station during the night. We pull off of the highway and we just pull into the first gas station we see. It was empty, but it was decently lit and the store seemed to be open. As soon as we pull in, a car pulls out from behind the store and goes to pump gas right next to us. My dad had already gotten out of the car, but he had barely opened the gas tank. Then, out of nowhere, he just jumps back into the car and locks the doors. As he jumps into the car, we see two rough-looking guys and a sketchy-looking girl jump out of their car and start walking over to ours. Their faces did not look friendly, to say the least. That's when my dad started the car and just floored it out of there. I have always been scared of these situations, especially at gas stations, and this did not help my anxiety. This is a very short story, but it scared me, to say the least. Number two. This happened about a year ago, which would make me 22 at the time. While not a real looker, I do have a baby face, and creeps and pedos come up to me on the regular. I look barely legal with makeup on, and as a young teen on the regular. I'm a female by the way, which in most cases makes me physically weaker than the grown ass men that approach me on the regular. I'm about 162 centimeters and tend to wear somewhat baggy clothes, which adds to my childish looks. Around 9 p.m. I got on the bus that I usually take and somehow managed to take a seat. At the next stop, I glanced around to see who got on the bus, trying to see if there were any elderly people or just generally someone that seemed like they needed to take a seat more than me. That's when I noticed this plain looking man. He was casually but decently dressed and somewhere between lean and slim. He had a short buzz cut probably to hide the fact that he was starting to go bald. But what I remember most vividly were his eyes. He was staring right at me. I started to feel uneasy as most people divert their eyes after a time in situations like these. Now I know I tend to be a bit paranoid, so I tried rationalizing right after I looked away. It could just be that he was tired after a long day's work and wasn't looking at me, but kind of through me without even realizing it. It has happened to me before, but there was something off about his look. It didn't seem blank, tired, or aloof. It was intense. I slowly looked back to look at him again, only to find him still staring at me with that same focus. I tried acting as if I was just looking around and then went back to looking at the window. I could see his reflection in the glass, so I kept an eye out for him. I still didn't feel afraid, just uneasy, since there were a lot of other people on the bus, and I was still convincing myself that I was just being paranoid. The next stop came, and then the next, and then the next after that. He didn't get off. The only thing that had changed was that there were significantly fewer people on the bus and he took the seat two rows in front of mine. However, instead of facing forward as a normal person would, he was turned to the side, which gave him a good view of me and the doors. I thought about getting off a stop early and just walking home, but quickly discarded the idea since that could just provide him with more opportunity to corner me somewhere if he had indeed tried to follow me. So on to my next plan. 
I tried to act like I was oblivious to his intent staring. I'm not sure how convincing I was since most of the time when I try to fake something, I just get the perfect blank poker face. He didn't seem to change his behavior though. So I tried telling myself that at least I didn't give off the vibe that he was scaring me now. I was close to my stop and had decided to wait and exit at the last possible moment. When the bus stopped and opened the doors, I looked out and then looked back again. I could see his body tense for a second. A few people started getting in and I saw him relax again. He never stopped staring. After the last person got on, I hurried up out of there with a smile on my face. I thought I had fooled him. Unfortunately, he jumped up almost at the same time as me and managed to get off as well. Damn. Not only did I not manage to lose him, but now he definitely knew I was trying to get away from him. I had no doubt he was following me now. I wasn't sure what to do. My house was just 300 meters away, but I didn't exactly want him to know where I live. Apart from that, as cliche as it sounds, I do live in a small, somewhat secluded street that isn't well lit, and not many people can be seen on it at night. My last hope was the crossroads I needed to go over. Let me paint you a picture of it since that is what saved me. So I got off the bus, walked down a bit, and crossed the street to my left. From there, I had to wait for the green light and cross the street again, and then on the first street to the left. A hundred more meters, and I was home. The thing was, when the light turns red for the cars on my left, it's still green for the cars coming from the right. After about, I don't know, 15 seconds, it turns red for them too, and then five to 10 more seconds, and then the light turns green so that people on foot can pass. I couldn't be sure since it's not a small city or neighborhood I live on, but I hope he wasn't from around and that he wouldn't know about the traffic lights. So I tried playing it cool, pretending not to notice he was constantly about two meters behind me like a freaking not so subtle shadow. As luck would have it, there wasn't too much traffic coming from my right, but there was some. I waited for the next car to come up, not too close and not too far, just enough for me to run across the street, but to prevent him from following directly behind. I remember hoping he wasn't from around here again before I started running. I guess he wasn't expecting that, I glanced quickly behind me and saw him starting to cross, but then backing up since there was still traffic coming from the right. This is when my luck doubled. A bus was heading my way to the stop that's right beneath the corner of the street. I'm pretty short, so I maneuvered my way through the crowd of people that just formed, hoping he'd lose track of me since most of the people, as most people in general, were taller than me. I managed to get to my street but I figured he wasn't far behind. I didn't want to run up straight to my house since he could easily spot me. I decided to crouch between two parked cars right at the corner. I figured it was a good hiding spot. The street was dimly lit and I could peek through the car window, but he couldn't easily see me. After a few seconds, there he was, right at the fucking corner. I could see that he was breathing somewhat heavily and he just stood there. He peered into my street as if straining to see if I He peered into my street as if straining to see if I was somewhere in the distance. Even though it was dark, I was scared he could somehow see me. Then he looked up ahead of him with the same expression. I didn't dare move, and after what seemed like an eternity, he decided to go up instead of on my street, but I still didn't want to move. I kept thinking what a stupid decision he'd made. There was no way I could have gone up fast enough for him not to see me had I went there. I was afraid he'd realize that and come back. After a while, I honestly didn't know how long. It could have been just seconds. I figured it would be stupid for me to wait for him to come back, so I rushed home. I made sure everything was locked after I got in and was never so glad to see my dad home. In hindsight, I could have just called my dad and asked him to pick me up at the bus stop, but I have no idea why that thought never crossed my mind. <laughs>